Namaste everyone. I just wanted to share a few things with you. A friend of mine just, uh, we were just in a casual conversation and he said, just going to a yatra or just going to a holy place makes, uh, you know, like just like a tourist destination makes no effect on our own spiritual progress. So which uh, started off this train of thought as to what is the best way one should approach to uh, visit a temple or to go to a Tirthyatra, what is the frame of mind one should have. So uh, we, uh, you know, like undertook many, many, we have undertaken many, many spiritual journeys, yatras with our Guru. So all along uh, Guruji has told us there is one thing which is very, very important and that is that you should have that Guru Bhakti in you and you should have that uh, very firm uh, faith that the Guru or the God resides within you. All along our uh, scriptures have told us that our Atma is our Guru, Atma is our God. So the more uh, we do our Swadhyaya, the more we study, the more we understand the Vedas and the Upanishads, the more we get into that uh, the jnana that God resides within us and when God resides within us we have you know like we can't see our own uh, atma we can't see the God which is residing within us so why we go to a tirthyatra is the same God which is inside us is reflected outside as the murti uh, and the in a form of in, in, a, in a particular form whether it is in the form of Shiva, whether it is in the form of Vishnu or whether it is in the form of Devi. So all these are uh, just an expression of our own internal faith and belief. So with that kind of a firm understanding and uh, the firm uh, faith and belief that we have in God, the same God which is residing in me is present in the temple outside. So with that kind of a, a bhavana, if we go to the temple, we will be able to resonate or we will be able to correspond with the God in the temple. So when, when the minute, you know, like when we go with that kind of uh, intense devotion, intense faith uh, in the words of the scriptures, uh, so th there is a transformative uh, experience that happens that, that the God which is there in front of me is not just made up of stone. Uh, it's just not been decorated with flowers for, uh, you know, uh, just as ornamentation. But she is the living goddess or she, he is the living God, whichever form of God, we, whichever temple we go to. So with that kind of belief, when there is uh, a mutual, uh, you know, like corresponding energy, my uh, Shraddha and Bhakti, which is being reflected onto the Murti in front of me, the same gets reflected back to me. The same energy gets reflected back to me from the God itself uh, as uh, uh, the vibrational energy and we feel that the presence of God which is there is, is, is a complete live energy which I had myself a very um, direct experience when I went to Tirupati. Uh, all along, this was way back 20 years ago where my Bhakti was still not very firm, it was still not very established. And I was still in the state of, you know, like, is there God? Is there no God? Are you there? Are you not there? So there were constant questions which was, you know, going on in my mind 20 years ago. So when we were standing, as we all know, Tirupati, we have to stand in the line for at least two hours. So when we were moving along in the line, there were so many questions in my mind. Uh, Venkateshwara, if you are there, Balaji or whichever, you know, Govinda, if you are there, Please give me one indication to you know, show your presence that you are there. Give me that kind of a, uh, you know, like the, the presence. I, may I feel your presence? All along I was praying in that way. And uh, when we came to the, you know, the temple door or the, the main door of the temple, there was a, a, it's a very unique experience which, I mean, it's difficult to put into words. But suddenly I found myself crying for no reason. I am not the crying type of a person. I am not an emotional person. Uh, I don't usually get tears quickly. I don't. But for some reason I was very surprised to see myself crying or uh, uh, tears flowing down 
for for reasons unknown to me uh, it's not that i have a great you know surge of devotion or the great love which made me cry or that intense devotion which brought tears to my eyes it was none of that but suddenly something happened inside and i found myself tears rolling down and i wiped my tears because i'm the person i don't like people to see me this weaker side in me as it is put because if you cry people say you know like women are very emotional they they are the weaker sex so i wiped off my tears i you know i said no no i'm not going to cry or anything uh, so as we were walking down still that same question god are you there are you there are you there show me show me your presence so I, there is a um, you know a diamond uh, ring in the top of the crown of venkateshwara so from a distance that sparkle of that one diamond alone you know really was so intense that that sparkle was so intense and it was it is as if it's giving me that direct message that see i'm i'm here i'm answering your prayers so uh, that that was the confirming factor for me that god you are there and that again when that i got that message from the god itself uh, as that sparkling diamond which uh, you know the rest of the uh, the murti of the god was nothing spectacular but just that one diamond was shining so brilliantly and coming straight to me and giving me that kind of a message inside that i am there for you so and uh, you know the logical mind uh, after the darshan i asked everybody did you see the diamond which was sparkling so everybody said no we didn't see so then i said okay only i was <laughs> i alone saw that uh, sparkling gem so uh, i you know like when we ask questions directly to god when our faith and our uh, devotion is there is a question which is very very intense which i am asking god god will definitely respond and give back the answer so that is the answer i got uh, 20 years ago and uh, that made my faith and belief much 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 stronger and i started believing yes god does exist and he exists not only outside but he exists inside me as the one who is speaking the one who is talking the one who is listening so it is after all the god's power which is making us alive which is making us reverberate with that kind of life energy so this is one experience which was uh, you know the starting point of my spiritual life thank you so much for listening i wanted to share this experience i'm sure many of you also have had the similar kind of an experience we take this as a direct uh, conversation with god a direct response from god so whenever we go to any temple with any question in our minds we will definitely get an answer it all depends upon the level or the intensity of our own level of devotion now there is a question oh, what happens when there is no devotion in our heart or what happens when there is that intensity or that yearning to get answers from god is not there or what happens if uh, i don't feel that kind of a love or that kind of uh, you know uh, that uh, wanting to go and wanting to see god or wanting to go to a temple what do i do then uh, all of us have got these kind of varied uh, degrees of levels of uh, you know devotion in us uh, so many times it has happened to me also when i am not fully charged i am not fully uh you know like in the sync with god's energy so what i do is whenever i go to a, a famous uh, tirtha yatra or a famous temple like kashi or like uh, ujjain and all that i what i my i personally what i love to do is to read the sthala purana that is the mahima of the god of that particular area of that particular place why is mahakal in ujjain what is the underlying uh, truth behind it so when i read all the uh, you know like oh, there's so much of uh, the mythology uh, on the internet so when i read it i get to get to know the uh, the mahima of that particular place and that charges me i said this particular 
uh, you know, uh, Guru has come here, he has uh, made his ashram here, he has made this, established his, uh, uh, this thing, uh, the Gurukula there. So all that with the vibrations of that Rishi, with the vibrations of all the devotees and the disciples of that particular place has made that particular place very, very sacred and uh, it is full of sanctity. So that gives me an extra boost. You know, like when we had gone to Sandipani Ashram in Ujjain, so I first prostrated to Sandipani. Now, please give me that kind of a level of a devotion that I can feel the presence of Krishna here. I can feel the presence of, uh, you know, like all the Gurukula students of Sandipani Ashram. We sat there, we meditated there and knowing what, uh, what all Guru, the Gurukula means to Krishna, how he mastered all the scriptures in a very short while along with his uh, uh, Guru Bandavas of Sudama and all that. So that made my, you know, like the interest level higher and higher. And that interest level in turn became devotion. So from my own experience, I said that, you know, like when you go with that kind of a uh, bhavana, God will definitely respond. And we got a wonderful prasad there. The people there uh, were so nice and so warm and loving that they, you know, like they insisted, no, no, you are all uh, from the Gurukula, from the ashram of the Guru yourself. So you're all, all your Guru Bandavas, please come and take this uh, sugar prasad. So they gave us that sugar prasad, which was, it was a nectar. So that was, uh, you know, direct uh, answer to our questions. Because like it is said, even the Purohits, the priests, the people, the sevaks there, they are, it is through them that God works. So we got the prasad through the sevaks, through the priests. So it is direct, you know, like you can say, so what? All temples do that. But it is our own bhavana that God has responded to our prayers and uh, he has given direct uh, prasad to us. And uh, there are many such occasions where, uh, you know, like we got direct um, prasad from God himself in, uh, in the Amarnath Yatra, which I can share in an, another episode. So all these are uh, wonderful experiences, which happens only when we become more and more subtle and we understand that God is responding to us. Otherwise, uh, if we are in our own mundane, uh, you know, way, logical way of thinking, we miss out all these uh, pointers. So that, that is a best part of being in a spiritual life. There is another question which many people ask, uh, how do you reach out to God when you have problems? Uh, this, uh, this question is applicable to all of us because all of us every now and then every day in our lives we are faced with situations which uh, you know can pose problems which, uh, which we ourselves cannot solve. So my personal view is I personally what I do is I sit down in a very quiet place on my own uh, the meditation seat and I pray intensely that please God, I am having this, this problem, everything is known to you, there is nothing which is not known. I am only a medium to speak out all my feelings and my problems that I have. So please resolve them in any which way you think is the best because God knows what is best for us. We in our own limited mind, we can look for solutions in our own limited way. But when we pray to God intensely that, May your will work it to solve this problem because you know what is the best in this particular situation, what is best for me and what is best for everyone which you, who all are uh, you know, involved in this particular problem. God, please help us. When I pray intensely, I definitely get results either through uh, you know, a phone call or somebody you know, approaches me and says, you know, this, this, this is the... Uh, you know, I have all these uh, items available, you can come and take it. So that problem is solved or it can be through, uh, you know, like uh, the guru himself who will come and say that this is the solution to your problem or I myself will get that some kind of a, a prompt from within that you go to so and so place and your uh, problem will be solved. So there are so many different ways. 
external as well as internal so only our only job our only duty is to pray intensely for our problems to be solved and they will be definitely solved that has been my uh, personal experience for so many years now and uh, this is has been told to us has been advocated to us by our guru shri shri nimishananda that whenever you have any kind of a problem or any kind of a difficulty or is there is any block in your sadhana or any block in your involvement or spiritual progress just pray intensely and lay everything at the feet of the guru or lay everything at the feet of the god so when we are you know like uh, it is the, uh, the sanskrit word is samarpan when we do the samarpan that everything is coming from you and is uh, you know going back to you it comes from you and goes back to you and we are just a medium to get your work done then automatically our uh, you know the burdens that we have within us gets released when we offer everything at the lotus feet of the guru or at the lotus feet of the god whatever you believe in so that you know makes us feel very light hearted and we become you know like clean and clear for that divine grace to flow through us and when that divine grace flows through us automatically we get the prompts we get that intuition to uh, you know solve all the problems that are coming in our way so thank you for listening namaste <laughs>